first uh, you put it off. Put it off. I will first. I have to talk. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Shiva, you can start with screen share. Okay. What? Not you. Oh. You don't have to share the screen, Asha. Not it's not me, sir. The post that just is. Oh, okay, 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 okay. My dear Shiva. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good evening, sir. Hi, Shiva. Hi, sir. Stop screen share. Yes, sir. Let me show. My dear, no one over. Sir. Did you open the camera? Sir, bad entry. Did you open the camera? Harsha, uh, you got to admit everybody. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm happy only. Harsha, have you admitted everybody? Yes, sir. They have logged. Okay. I think it's okay. Sir, no. Shiva, uh, which year you are doing, boss? Sir, I am now finally a PG, sir. You want to see, no? Yes, sir. From an union, sir. Oh, sir. Uh, from Sanatana, kind of. Sir, yes, okay. I have joined uh, now. Uh, Okay, okay, don't disturb him. Yeah, he will tune in. He's a professional guy. Okay, sir. Yes. <laughs> we'll wait for five minutes, uh, Harsha. Professor Anthony? Professor Anthony? No, no, he's tuned in. So we have Professor Anthony. Hi, Anton. How are you? Hi, Raki Bai. Why is it coming out of the way? What is this? Hello, Raki Bai. Good evening, Anton. When did you start uh, doing Pan India movies, man? <laughs> but your, uh, your uh, uh, Indian name is very nice. Yash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, uh, shall we start, uh, Prof. Ranto? 
Yes, 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 we'll start. Okay, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, good evening, everybody. And uh, it's a very, very important uh, evening for you all today. Uh, actually, I want to uh, start this uh, series with a few uh, words of advice. Number one is, uh, um, uh, you see, uh, many, many people are uh, practicing ENT. Uh, many, many people are practicing uh, good uh, uh, you know, um, uh, good ENT. But uh, there are very few who really want to impart knowledge. And uh, I think there are very few teachers who really want to, uh, you know, propagate knowledge. And in that, um, in that row, I keep Professor Anthony, uh, uh, you know, on the top. Uh, the reason being, actually, uh, you see, every year we do grand rounds. And this year, actually, uh, Professor Anthony rang up to me and said, hey, what happened to your grand rounds? Uh, which is actually uh, telling how much of, uh, you know, uh, involvement uh, Professor Anthony has got in teaching students. And uh, this is something very unique. Uh, in fact, I also wanted to do it, actually. And uh, if I do it, I'll do it only with him. He's, he's called the Encyclopedia of ENT. I have great respect for him, apart from he being my classmate. Uh, very, very knowledgeable uh, personality in this field. Uh, and uh, honestly, when I have a doubt, I immediately phone up and ask him and uh, he, he will not refer any textbook just like that he will give the answer uh, uh, spontaneous uh, answers i've got from him fantastic surgeon you should see his uh, surgery as well um, so but today uh, what is this grand rounds about so for people who have just joined first year ms post graduates see this is something like a mock exam uh, so professor anthony will be interviewing one of his uh, post graduates I thank his postgraduate, Dr. Shiva, who is doing a, his third year uh, MS in Madras Medical College in Professor Anthony's unit. And you know one thing, uh, everybody wants to go to his unit because he's so academic. I'm so proud to say that I'm his classmate. I'm proud to say that uh, I'm one of his students. So uh, without much ado, uh, I think I will hand over the dice to um, Professor Anthony. One thing I want to tell you is that I have done many grand rounds. And uh, some people actually, what will happen is that they will tell the answers before and it'll look like a, a sort of a uh, pre-prepared uh, question answer session. But here you will see the real, uh, uh, you know, uh, exam type of, uh, uh, you know, environment. All of you take your notebooks, take your pen and start jogging down his points. These are the questions which will be asked for you yeah, we'll in your viva. So here we are, we start right now. Okay, over to you, Professor Anthony. Thank you, Janagram. You know, uh, thanks for your kind words. But uh, whatever kind words I tell, uh, that is not, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, warranted because you are a, a pan world star and uh, throughout the world, they, they know you and uh, you are caliber. I am so proud to say that I am your classmate and I know you. Right. So knowing Janagram itself is a big thing. Uh, so somebody comes and uh, comes and talks ENT to me and they try to boss. Then I tell, listen, I am Janagram's classmate and friend. Uh, that will solve most of the problems. So thank you for being our friend. And uh, Metros Media College is very proud of you. I should say that. Once this all this uh, COVID uh, and other things are all over, uh, I'll expect you to come back to Madras Medical College to do your uh, uh, build your magic van and show your uh, prowess to uh, the, the next generation. As I know you are so much interested in uh, teaching people, you are a, uh, what do you say, you are an uh, inborn metabolic error teacher. So it's there in your gene that uh, I tell you, you are a congenital chronic teacher. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when somebody asks you to take a graph, <laughs> somebody asks you to take a graph, you will tell one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and uh, I find it when I come to Royal Pearl to uh, relax and do some surgeries, uh, any, anyone uh, who's a resident at that time, they'll come and ask, 
sir are you doing that third step don't you do that the fourth step don't you do this uh, this step and things like that no with you name everything i still remember from your uh, elephant year the uh, uh, jula jula techniques so uh, i'm so happy that uh, you are such a uh, enthusiastic teacher and with this uh, we'll go into the the, the grand rounds i'll introduce you Siva Subramaniam to you he is the uh, my uh, right hand left hand and uh, everything because uh, in Madras Medical College we have 30 post graduates uh, per year so of which five to six post graduates will be in every unit unfortunately this this batch uh, we had about 25 girls so only oh, yeah. five boys are there oh, yeah. so he is the only boy he is the only boy in my in my unit and uh, he used to run for everything from arranging conferences <laughs> arranging food and uh, fighting with uh, with anesthetist anything you tell him he is the man so with this uh, he was so helpful to me in running my my ward uh, with all the uh, lady pgs around uh, so uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see how he is presenting his case today and please bear with him he is not like uh, sara who was presented last year uh, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, because he was overworked uh, and we have not rigorous we'll see how he is doing today uh, hope he is uh, more tense than me uh, shiva shiva dr shiva yes sir good evening sir. I, i just message dr anthony if i were your student i'll be definitely failing only <laughs> so shiva will definitely pass and because he has been taught by you so whatever you say no will be better than my answer only go ahead and uh, freak out boss i really uh, first of all congratulate you because you see it's very uh, uh, bold of you to come in front of the audience like this because this is going to be watched throughout the world believe me this this uh, is such a sort of program and the whole world is going to watch and you are going to be uh, of course uh, the uh, kadha nayaka and the director is there sitting there with his uh, charming face okay over to you thank you sir thank you yes shiva we are waiting yes sir shall i start sir yeah please yes sir. A 50-year-old female, Mrs. X, a daily wage laborer hailing from Adyar, came with the chief complaints of left ear discharge and the, for the past three years, and left ear hard of hearing for the past one year. History of presenting illness. Patient was apparently going, normal before going yes. going before this uh, presenting illness. What are all the what are all you consider as a chief complaints of ear diseases? So ear discharge, ear pain, hard of hearing, tinnitus, and vertigo. these are all the five important main complaints okay of which uh, uh, the order might put uh, order of hearing next to ear discharge so why you want to know about order of hearing why you want to know about ear discharge what is chronic suppurative otitis media so it's a chronic uh, suppurative inflammation of the mucoperiosteal lining of middle ear cleft so i am asking these these questions for the sake of first years uh every definition is taken as a definition and uh, you got to come out with the exact words right there are two three definitions for csom the commonest definition is the chronic suppurative otitis media is the chronic suppurative inflammation of the mucoperiosteal lining of the middle ear cleft middle ear cleft includes eustachian tube uh, middle ear cavity and mastoid air cell system so uh the uh, who definition of csom is uh, intermittent or continuous otorrhea through a permanent non intact tympanic membrane for more than 3 months. months duration so to say a patient who is suffering from csom you should have two important things one is present or past history of ear discharge okay second one is uh, perforated a perforated drum so these two things are all important 
to say this patient has got a three so yeah if the uh, uh, then the second thing is the patient is present with the ear discharge we call it as an active disease if the patient has got no ear discharge for more than six year, six months we call it as an inactive disease. in between is called a quiescent disease and yes. basically csoa is called a squamous type or a uh, mucosal type before presenting a case uh, uh, you should go into an idea of knowing whether it is a squamous type or a mucosal type because a squamous type is known to produce lot of complications so uh, and the, it's not that mucosal type will not produce complications but the chances for complication in the mucosal type is very very less to keep this in in the mind we will go to the presenting uh, illness which will give you uh, an idea about the what type of csoi we are dealing with. okay yes. history of presenting illness patient was apparently normal before 3 years then she developed the left ear discharge which was insidious in onset intermittent which is thick scanty and creamy it is associated with occasional blood stains and foul smell not associated with ear pain or headache as uh, aggravated by head bath and relieved with um, uh, topical medications ear drops left uh, siva you should tell the color of the discharge yes it's a greenish uh, yeah so the characteristics amount color consistency blood stain foul smelling will decide what type of discharge it is so basically ear discharge can be a non infective or infective discharge for example csf arteria is a discharge is a uh, uh, fluid coming out of the ear which is not because of infection but uh, the, the ear discharge can be serous mucoid or purulent so uh, serous discharge usually comes from the early disease or a late disease or allergic disease or an external canal disease but when you are doing a csom it may be a mucopurulent or a purulent discharge mucopurulent discharge characteristic feature of a uh, tube body panic and uh, purulent discharge is characteristic of an anticoagulant disease so how do you differentiate these two discharge by their characters sir uh, purulent discharge will be scanty in amount it, 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 yes. it will be thick greenish uh, in color greenish in color uh, But sometimes it will be uh, associated with blood stains and foul smell. So amount, color, consistency, blood stain, and foul smelling. It is uh, amount is scanty, color is greenish, uh, consistency is thick, creamy, um, foul smelling sometimes, blood stain sometimes. So this is mucopurulent discharge. okay purulent discharge will be uh, sorry this is a purulent discharge mucopurulent discharge will be copious or large amount then uh, copious or profuse it is uh, yellowish in color or um, uh, whitish to greenish yellow in color sticky because it's mucoid it will be sticky it will be not foul smelling not blood stain okay right uh, then out of hearing patient had a left ear hard of hearing which was uh, for about 1 year and it is also in incidence onset slowly progressive uh, she is not able to hear the whisper sounds on that uh, left ear uh, she is also able to hear the normal conversations on uh, with the left ear is it common for a patients to identify an hearing loss particularly one year duration on only one year uh, sir actually uh, she so told that uh, she is not able to uh, speak phone with the left ear uh, that's why uh, uh, out of hearing so before the advent of these phones so much uh, cell phones the hearing loss will be uh, uh, hearing loss due to i mean hearing loss on one side alone will be found out when the patient sits on that side and talk or whenever the sound comes from the behind they will not be able to localize the sound but after the advent of these cell phones uh, we always use on both ears and we can compare which ear is you are hearing better and if there is a less amount of hearing you can find out okay then no history of ear pain no history of headache no history ear of pain and what it is if the patient has got pain what is it mean this patient complains of deep uh, boring pain in the ear any impending complications of Mastitis, uh, otitis externa, 
பெரிய <laughs> and then patient is complaining of deep boring pain what are all the complication can produce pain in the ear uh, sir only you said mastitis then subperiosteal abscess subperiosteal abscess then petrositis apex petrositis yes sir intracranial complications Throm- like thrombophlebitis lateral sinus thrombophlebitis lateral sinus thrombosis usually don't produce pain very rarely produces pain whenever there is a very sinus abscess uh, it, it, the pain is because of extra dural abscess pain is because of uh, meningitis pain is because of uh, dull aching pain whenever there is a expanding uh, brain abscess all these conditions produces pain so when the cso patient complains of pain you should be careful okay you should be careful okay right then no history of tinnitus and vertigo no history of fever no history if, if of the fever. patient has got tinnitus and vertigo what does that indicate sir uh, tinnitus can be due to any cause from the external ear to the inner ear okay. can be due to accumulation of discharge or wax uh, in, in discharge in the middle ear ossicular disruption or ossicular fixity uh, associated mass uh, csom with a hearing loss can cause tinnitus but usually when the patients get tinnitus and associated uh, uh, vertigo with or without vertigo you should think of sir if the patient develops tinnitus with or without vertigo in a csom patient anticoagulant disease you should think of is charging the active disease when it it produces lot of discharge no yes. atigandral disease usually it because of an inner ear involvement okay patient is going for mixed hearing loss okay then uh, the patient de- what is the cause for if your patient develops vertigo what do you think of inner ear involvement sir labyrinthitis labyrinthine fistula labyrinthine fistula okay then inner ear involvement okay like labyrinthitis right proceed no history of nausea and vomiting no history of neck pain or stiffness no history of double vision no uh, significant nasal and throat complaints you told about all the intracranial complications but you have left out uh, uh, facial pulse sir there was no okay. history of facial facial asymmetry not able to open the mouth not able to do that to the drinking all these things you should know next past history and uh, patient was not a diabetic not a hypertensive uh, no history of tuberculosis epilepsy thyroid disease no history of previous ent surgery and uh, no history of similar illness in the past family history uh, no significance uh, personal history person uh, patient consumes mixed diet normal sleep and pattern uh, sleep pattern and appetite uh, normal blood level and bladder habit no other habitual history family history what is the significant family history for csi sir uh, socio economic uh, status status uh, what socio economic status it is common sir in poor socio economic status uh, oh, csom is a disease of the poor socio economic status right so patient uh, you should have a socio economic status the overcrowding causes cross repeated reinfections then a patient who lives in a house which is not well ventilated or not well uh, lit the light is very low these conditions will augment an upper respiratory tract infection often which may cause the eustachian tube dysfunction and the chances for um chronic septic and otic severity are more high okay right then next next present yes sir. general examination patient no. was moderately once you, once you finish care. no wait wait once you finish your uh, clinical examination i mean uh, once you finish the history you should be in a position to tell you tell us is there a lesion there is a lesion where is the lesion and what is the lesion 
Okay. So tell me, is there a lesion? Yes. Where is the lesion? What the lesion? What do you think you are dealing with? And there is a chronic inflammation of a uh, middle ear. Okay. Why do you say that? Yeah, because of the duration, it's uh, about three years, and uh, that is that is what there was intermittent discharge from the middle ear, and uh, the characteristic of discharge is uh, similar to that of atrial disease. Okay, so this make you think that the patient has got a middle ear problem, probably infection, so long-standing infection. Maybe it is a atrial disease, right? Okay, right. next. Uh, good examination, right? General examination. Patient was moderately built and nourished. Patient was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. There was no periodic uh, pallor, stenosis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy, or repeated edema. Patient's vitals was stable. Uh, Don't use this mnemonic in the exam. It's okay you, you use it today to hear, but don't generally use mnemonics, right? Then they will ask what is sickle, what is sickle, what is uh, what is nickel. Tell me one disease which is caused by nickel over exposure. Tell me one disease occurs because of taking a lot of pickle and what is associated with sickle. So this happens to, I think, Janikram knows. This happens to one of the very, very studious of my senior who present when he was presenting on external nose, he said Nasion. Instead of telling the external nose appears normal, he said nasion. Then they started asking what is enion, what is tedion, what is. Uh, is keep on asking. No, yeah. he knows. He yeah. knows. He can do that. He can do the case well. And suddenly they have they have diverted. And because of what he told, and then he got scared. He fainted. So examiners, uh, few examiners, start, few two of the examiners start. Uh, we can can give him a break, but one examiner says no. They arose this uh, ascending reticular activating system, made him sit down again, and asked, started asking questions. Taniya telichcha di panga. Taniya telichchi enchu karavchi. Tiri question keda. Keda when you are. I remember very well. I remember very well. We are all in the uh, uh, examination all then. So it happens. So don't use this, this word. So the thing is, the knack of taking examination is take you in such a way that you take the examiner in the path what you like him to take you. And uh, you act as if he is taking you. But actually, you should, do, you should lead him in the path. OK, right. Then. Year examination. Uh, Pre-auricular area, pinna, post-auricular area was normal on the left side. In EAC, there were minimal uh, greenish discharge present in wait, the... Wait, 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 wait. Uh, see, this is not case presentation, basically. It's a general rounds. Uh, uh, the grand rounds means pre-auricular region, what are all things we will look for? Sir, any sinus, pre-auricular tags, pre-auricular swellings? Tag. Swelling. Well, well, what's, the, what's the importance of tax? Sir, can you, any other congenital anomalies can uh, we? So we when can, the patient uh, has got a tag, patient can have an associated anomaly like ossicular, uh, uh, ossicular anomalies or patient can have a facial nerve anomalies or patient can have other anomalies. Okay, so you've got to be careful when you're operating on a patient. Then you look for nodes, pre-auricular pre nodes. Okay, what do you look in the pinna? Sir, size of the pinna. Okay, any uh, congenital anomalies like low here, uh, then what else? What is pseudocyst? In post particular pinna? region, uh, what is pseudocyst of pinna? Uh, boxes here, uh, the collection of blood between the peri pericondyl layer and the cartilage of the. Not blood, it's a serous fluid. It's yeah, called serous. seroma. Okay, the serous fluid accumulates between the pericondrium and the cartilage and lifting it. If it gets infected, it can cause pericontritis, can cause eating away of the uh, uh, cartilage, can produce shriveled ear. Okay. Then what do you look at the post auricular area? Post auricular groove for any swelling in the post auricular region. Post auricular groove should be looked for uh, depth and. Uh, Why did you talk about post auricular groove? 
then i will ask you what's the difference between a uh, acute pharyngosis and the mastoiditis sir in pharyngosis the post auricular groove will be uh, the, uh, deeper and in um, acute mastoiditis it will be shallow it will be accentuated and it will be obliterated then what are all the other differences sir pharyngosis uh, there will be tragal sign positive in acute mastoiditis uh, mast tenderness will be present over the symphoconca not in the tragus Uh, posterior wall sagging will be there in acute mastoiditis posterior canal wall sagging pinna the pinna will be pushed uh, downwards and laterally in the acute mastoiditis downwards and uh, backwards in uh, is not pushed closest. downwards in pharyngosis it is pushed outwards and laterally that in a case of a the pharyngosis is pushed outwards in a case of mastoiditis is pushed downwards and outwards okay then what about the hearing loss yes, sir sir in pharyngosis i have asked one question let us let yes. us let us huh? yeah what is, what is frank sign uh, my dear shiva frank frank sign sir uh, frank uh, bl- pass not frank plus a pass frank sign of the ear lobe of the ear lobe anything connected to the heart okay diagonal ear lobe uh, which actually is called the frank sign and that represent coronary artery disease okay i mean uh, this is indicator for coronary artery disease Okay, this was asked to me. That's why I asked you. Okay, boss, carry on, carry. On. Sorry, 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 Professor Andre. Before Professor Andre, I should ask me. Should not ask any question. Bye. Okay, post auricular region. What are all the signs of mastoiditis in post auricular region? With the mastoiditis. Is that the tenderness or the symbol? Okay, you get mastoiditis. Then the swelling. Then warm the tendon. What is ironing out of mastoid area? Because of the periosteitis, there will be thickening of the the periosteum. When you palpate the mastoid process, all the bumps will get ironed out. That's called ironing out sign. Okay. Then what is Grissinger sign? Sir, edema of the postural region. Pitting edema in the postural post region. Okay, it's due to mastoid. Mass tear every three vein thrombosis. Okay, then uh, uh, what is battle sign? Sir, erythema. Uh, erythema over the post uh, post auricular area, sir. It will be uh, in trauma. Not erythema. It is bluish discoloration of the skin over the post mar- post uh, auricular area is due to the. a uh, mass trauma uh, to the skull base whenever you have a road traffic accident the tearing of mass tear hemisphere vein because of the fracture will produce bluish discoloration of the uh, post auricular area okay then uh, so these are all the common things what you look for in the post auricular area then next lateral canal uh ek din Left side the EAC, there was minimal dis- uh, greenish discharge present in the roof of the roof and posterior uh, wall of the EAC, which was cleaned and uh, tympanic membrane was visualized. Uh, there was a perforation in that perforation in the attic region uh, with the granulation tissue inside uh, inside the attic. And past tensor looks appears a normal line uh, and mobile. You think this past tensor is normal? Yes, sir. Corona flight is uh, mildly distorted. Then mm-hmm. it is Otherwise, not glistening. When it is not glistening, it is not normal. It looks retracted, and then. Uh, It's, it's look this uh, distorted and the posterior part you can see a little bit of um, uh, thickening. Okay, so you see a attic perforation with a granulation tissue inside the attic perforation. Do you see any cholesterol here? 
or have you cleaned it cleaned the cholesterol no sir there were no no cholesterol in this uh, region sir it, the granulation tissues were present inside the hepatic region so what uh, what is the how do you grade this hepatic sir retraction uh, toss yeah toss Uh, grade one is a dimpling, a simple dimpling of the attic. Grade two retraction is draping uh, of this. So grade three, uh, grade three. That means retraction. the partial erosion of the scutum. Uh, partial scutum erosion. Okay. What are all the uh, uh, where does the retraction starts? Prusak space. What are the boundaries of prusak space? Uh, Laterally by pars placida, medially in neck of the malleus, superiorly uh, lateral malleus, fanning fibers of the lateral malleolar fold, inferiorly by the lateral process of malleus. Okay, so that's crucial space. Right, you take a small pin and puncture the pars placida, where you enter is the crucial space. Medially by the neck of the malleus, laterally by the pars placida, superiorly by the fanning fibers of the lateral malleolar fold, inferiorly by the lateral process of the malleus. Okay, so uh, there the cholesterol starts. Okay, then um, uh, fine. What are the other findings? Uh, tuning for tests uh, in Rini. Uh, on the left side, uh, it was uh, positive in uh, sorry negative in uh, 256 hertz and positive in 512 and 1024 hertz. Weber was lateralized to the left side. Uh, airborne connection negative in, negative in 256 hertz only, sir. Okay. Weber was lateralized to left side. So can you differentiate uh, uh, hearing loss? That's connection my... was not reduced in the left side. Can you, can, you, uh, can you differentiate a mild, moderate, severe hearing loss with your uh, release test? Yes, sir. How? Oh. If uh, only uh, 256 is uh, negative and uh, both 512 and 1024 is positive, it, it can be a mild uh, conductive hearing loss. Uh, if uh, 256 and 512 is negative and uh, 1024 is positive, it can be moderate conductive hearing loss. If the, all the three is uh, a negative, it can be a severe conductive hearing loss. If the only Weber is lateral, what is that? Uh, for Weber to last, lateralize, there should be any conductive hearing loss uh, in the left side or uh, sensor neural hearing loss in the right side, sir. In the conductive hearing loss, how much it should be? Uh, seven to ten decibels. Seven decibels. Uh, difference okay. uh, between two. There should years. be difference of. There should be difference of seven, seven. decibels. If it is seven, seven decibels, decibels, you get a Weber gets lateralized. Okay, you don't see five twelve two fifty six together. If it is uh, two fifty six is uh, really negative, other two is really positive. It is mild, then moderate, then severe. Okay. Uh, what is false negative? Mean? Sir, in sensor neural hearing loss, false negative. In uh, unilateral uh, profound sensor neural hearing loss, uh, uh, if the uh, vibrating tu tuning fork is kept over the mastoid, it can be heard through the uh, normal ear, but the air conduction is absent. It is false. What is what is the phenomenon is called? Uh, it's called crossover phenomenon. So bone conduction is first. It's called crossover, crossover phenomenon. Bone conduction is uh, here uh, on. Yeah, bone side. So when there is a severe sensor in your hearing loss, so stick here on the, on my right ear, and when you keep the tuning fork here, you will be hearing from the left side. But uh, the, the bone conduction you cannot recognize whether it is left side or or right side. So you will be hearing the sound. So you will be telling that that's a in negative. That will be differentiated by doing your Weber test. So what is ABC? 
absolute bone conduction test uh, we will be testing the bone conduction alone sir by uh, after closing that uh, es including the ec we will uh, you, uh, vibrate the tuning fork and place in the mastoid once the there patient no, uh, there is no ec ies including external artery canal external artery after the external artery canal you assume the examiner is normal Vibrate tuning fork. Keep it over the patient mastoid process. When the patient stops hearing it, you can keep it on. Examiner's ear. Examiner's ear, and to check it up. And then you can uh, grade it, or you can uh, um, quantify it by uh, calculating how many seconds the examiner can hear. The examiner hears five seconds, or examiner hear uh, hear ten seconds. Uh, the ten seconds is severe compared to that of that five seconds. Okay, you can quantify the uh, hearing loss by A, B, C. Okay, then what is three-point tenderness? Uh, sir, uh, using three fingers, uh, uh, sorry, index, uh, middle, and uh, thumb finger. Middle finger will be kept over the simba concha. Index finger over the tip of sorry, posterior border of the mastoid and uh, the thumb finger in the tip of the mastoid cell. So if tenderness is present in the simba concha, it indicates uh, any mastoid is. Uh, tenderness present over the posterior border of ma mastoid. Uh, it indicates a mastoid ma mastoid emissary vein thrombosis. If tenderness is present in the tip uh, of the mastoid. A tip cell infection can be there. Okay, so that's about the three point tenderness. Then what is histolytic test? How do you do histolytic test? So using uh, Siegel's pneumatic speculum, we will uh, vary the. What are the? What is the? Um, Uh, Siegel pneumatic speculum contains. There uh, are oral speculum, magnifying lens, and uh, pneumatic bulb. What lens? What lens? Concave lens. Sorry, convex lens. Sir. By convex lens. By convex. What is its power? Two x uh, magnification. Two. Yeah, lens power is uh, quantified in diopters. How many diopters? Ten diopters. It gives you the two times magnification. Okay. What are the advantages of Siegel's speculum? Sir, uh, to check the mobility of the tympanic membrane, to do okay. fistula test, okay. uh, to deliver medications for magnification. Okay. Um, powder insufflation test uh, can be done through. Okay. Then. You can uh, suck out the uh, the secretion from the middle ear cavity. What is powder insufflation test? Sir, uh, it is hard to differentiate the type for uh, sorry other and other see what it is media and uh, perforation sometimes sir. And that time uh, we will use a boric acid to insufflate the tympanic membrane. If the squamous epithelium is there, the boric acid won't get absorbed. If there is a inner ear mucosa. Sorry, don't get mucosa, wet. Wet. You don't get wet. Okay, if there is a middle ear mucus that is exposed, that secretes mucus. So whenever the boric powder is sprayed on a wet surface, it gets stuck and becomes wet. Okay, that's called powder insufflation test to differentiate between the grossly retracted tympanic membrane with that of the large central perforation. Okay, right. Then, but. On right, uh, fistula test was negative in the right side. Three point tenderness was negative, and the tracheal tenderness was negative in the left side. Uh, so fistula on... test. What is fistula test? What is the aim of the, the fistula test? Sir, uh, to vary the pressure by difference in the middle ear, and to check whether there is any fistula between uh, mid inner ear and the middle ear. Fistula track communication between inner and middle ear. Find out the abnormal communication between the membranous labyrinth and the middle ear cavity, middle ear cleft. That is fistula test. How do you do fistula test? What are the methods of doing fistula test? Sir, uh, we can use pneumatic, sorry, or or uh, Siegel speculum to variate the pressure in the middle ear. We can alternatively close the tragus and uh, open it. We can also use otoscope with pneumatic speculum, tightly fitting otoscope with pneumatic speculum, sir. Uh, There is an hour and forty for it. Pneumatic with the Siegel pneumatic speculum, we will vary the pressure in the middle ear. Uh, when the patient still uh, develops vertigo, we we will uh, look for the nystagmus. If there is nystagmus, uh, the fistula test is positive, sir. 
how do you create this great system? Even if there's a granulation tissue or a polyp, you give a pressure with a probe on a granulation tissue or a polyp, you can elicit the fistula uh, reaction. Okay, so how will you do the um, uh, how will you do the fistula test? So using a pneumatic speculum, sorry, seagull speculum, we will uh, intermittently uh, vary the pressure uh, in the middle ear. You got to inform the patient that you are going to do a test which can potentially produce nausea, giddiness, or uh, giddiness, or patient can fall down. To make the patient sit comfortably, uh, explain your procedure to the patient, and then do the patient. When you give alternate the, the pressure, what do you look for? We will look for nystagmus uh, in the affected. Nystagmus so should looking towards the, the affected. Yeah. For the patient's here. How do you create this practice? Sir, uh, nystagmus beating. Grade fast components the towards the. Fast components okay. towards the affected side. The fistula test only when the patient be doing on the affected side. Okay, when you press, it will deviate to the opposite side. When you when you relax the bulb, it will come to the same side. So when the patient develops uh, uh, only nystagmus, that's great one. Nystagmus with giddiness is great too. Nystagmus giddiness vomiting and the patient collapses, that's great. Okay, what is false negative fistula test? Sir, uh, there will be in the uh, fistula in the uh, fistula's communication, but the fistula test will be negative in, uh, in a dead labyrinth. That can be a false negative uh, fistula test. And then a uh, fistula which is tightly blocked by a, a colostoma Person. also can produce a negative fistula reaction. Okay, what is false positive? Sir, uh, in uh, early menias disease. Uh, the saccule will be lying uh, just beneath the foot plate of uh, stapes uh, so that uh, it will produce an nystag sometimes it will produce nystagmus during a uh, fistula test it is false positive okay uh, what are the condition what is anybody say sir uh, alternating the uh, nystagmus while uh, alternating the pressure in the middle ear anybody say this comes when the patient has got a uh, lax uh, annular ligament, anybody sign this other sign of a false negative, uh, false positive fistula test. In the case of a congenital syphilis, the ligaments will be lax. So, in the case of a lax annular ligament, there will be an hypermobile foot plate that will cause um, when you do a fistula test, patient develops uh, giddiness. But uh, there is no actual fistula. That's called false negative. Okay, then. Why you alternate pressure, uh, pressure is used? Because the but pressure difference the usually is, was normal. Uh, there, is a, there is a question uh, why. Uh, let's say. Why the. Uh, alternate pressure is used for fistula test because the membranous labyrinth is inside the well protected bony shell. When the shell is lost, the middle ear pressure gradient is transmitted to the uh, uh, inner ear on the membranous labyrinth, which causes the, the stimulation of membranous labyrinth and giddiness. That's why you want to check a fistula test, you've got to give an alternate pressure. Right? Uh, next. Continue. Continue, Siva. <laughs> Hello. Normal and mobile in right side. Uh, Rinne was positive in all frequencies. Uh, airborne conduction test was not reduced in the right side. 
there were no tenderness in uh, there were no negative tra tracheal tenderness negative three point tenderness and uh, negative fistula test bilateral facial nerve was see why you are not audible clearly normal at present Siva, the three points. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Anyone? Sir, he got logged out. Maybe he will be logging in. Yeah. The the three points are one is over the zimba conca, second one is over the posterior border of the mastite process, third one is over the tip of the mastite process. Zimba conca corresponds to the McEwen's triangle, which is the uh, uh, mastite uh, uh, mastite antrum. Posterior border is for the mastite emissary vein. Tip is for the mastite tip. That's the three points. Okay. Right. So I have you back. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh... Yeah, it's okay. Present. Tip is for mass. On right side, the preauricular. On right side, the preauricular area, pinna, postauricular area, and EAC was normal. Normal and in, uh, intact and uh, mobile in the right side. Uh, Rini was can you check your given all the three frequencies and the ABC Shiva, you was check your connection, uh, please. Produced in the right side. There were no tracheal tenderness, no three point tenderness, and no fistula test. Uh, fistula test. Negative on the right side. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. One minute. Sorry, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, Shiva, tell me. Uh, sorry, sir. The network was uh, issues. Uh, yeah, tell me. Uh, bilaterally, the facial nerve was uh, clinically normal, sir. No, sir. There was any no abnormal finding, and in throat there was no any abnormal tell me your finding. Diagnosis. Tell me, tell me your diagnosis. Uh, left sided chronic otitis media with the active squamosal disease with the mild conductive hearing loss without any complication. Okay. Um, why do you say this is, this is squamosal disease? 
because of the in, in history itself the patient had a scanty discharge with uh, greenish color that stage is gone that stage is gone on the examination on examination uh, there was a perforation in the attic region with the granulation tissue inside the attic and passing what is granulation tissue uh, fibrous fibrous tissues uh, with uh, neovascularized uh, neo, neo angiogenesis a reparative tissue with a fibroblast and a new vascular uh, new genesis of vascularization okay so what is that granulation tissue do to the body so it will uh, cause a when you see a, around the when you see a, a granulation what do you think underlying underlying inf inflammation and it can erode the bone underlying there is a, always an underlying osteitis okay how does cholestoma erode bone sir by pressure necrosis hyperemic decalcification uh, vicarious blood supply enzymatic degradation okay uh, see the 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 pressure necrosis is not the pressure is sufficient to cause the bone necrosis but this will cause the ingression of keratin inside the mucosa which will cause the uh, active inflammation in the uh, mucous membrane which will attract all the multinucleated giant cells and the uh, inflammatory inflammatory cells this produces increased blood supply to the local area whenever there is an increased blood supply on a bone the calcium will go from the high cal high concentrated uh, uh, bone to the low concentrated blood so the bone will lose the calcium the bone contains three important structures one is calcium second is osteocytes third is the uh, matrix so the calcium moves out of the bone is called hyperemic decalcification other is called allostasis then there are a lot of multinucleated uh, giant cells these giant cells will form osteoblast as well as osteoclast but the osteoclastic activity will be more compared with that of the osteoblastic activity so it will eat away all the cells and lot of enzymes will be secreted these enzymes will cause the uh, the elastase protease and uh, collagenase enzymes will eat away the matrix so the matrix goes cells goes or the calcium goes so bone become weak and it will go for necrosis what is the first bone which will get eroded in the cholestoma sir the lenticular process of uh, incus lenticular process of incus is the first bone which will why sir it, uh, what is the let's supply. supply for the lenticular process sir it's anastomote is between the branch from sylomacide artery and uh, arteria nutrica in incudi incudomalioli okay. okay so which is the, the branch of sir uh, middle meningeal artery in between there is an artery there the tem superior temporal artery superior tympanic branch Okay. superior tympanic branch of the middle meningeal artery which comes inside the, the middle artery gives the uh, nutrient branch to the ossicles called arteria nutrica incudomalioli so this artery will come up to the level of the lenticular process with so the lenticular process that supply comes from the anastomosis from the sylomacide artery which comes from the uh, 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 pyramid along the um, Uh, stapedius tendon and, and supplies the superstructure of stapes and along with that supplies the, the lenticular process. So these two arteries, anastomosis, is, is a long distance artery is called a very poor poor blood supply. So chances for it to get necrosis is high. Okay, then um, uh, how does the uh, where does this cholestoma starts? In prosac space, uh, usually in the most commonly in the prosac space. How does it spread? from prosac space uh, it enters the superior incudal space and uh, in lat lateral to the body of incus uh, it will go into the aditus and antrum okay then how it comes down uh, through the posterior pouch of walrus it will enter the mesotympanum what is the posterior pouch of walrus boundaries uh, Sir, uh, posterior malleolar fold posteriorly and uh, anteriorly by the remaining posterior part of tympanic membrane. Past tense, sir. Laterally, medially. I am sorry, sir. Laterally by the tympanic membrane. Laterally by the tympanic membrane. Medially by the posterior malleolar. Posterior malleolar ligament. 
Okay, so in between the space is called posterior pouch of wall rash through which the colostoma comes to the posterior mesa tympanum. Similarly, anteriorly through an anterior mesa tympanum, it uh, anterior to anterior pouch of wall rash is comes to the anterior mesa tympanum. Okay, how does the posterior uh, how does the posterior superior uh, colostoma spreads? Posterior superior colostoma goes to the retro tympanum and uh, it will enter into the sinus tympanae and facial recess. It can go down into the hypo tympanum. Uh, it can go in, into the, uh, go medially into the promontory and enter the meso tympanum and uh, through the isthmus tympanicus, it will enter into the aditus and antrums. Oh. Sir, from meso tympanum, uh, isthmus tympanicus posticus, it will enter into the superior incudal space and it will enter. Sorry, superior. It goes into the inferior incudal space, medial okay. to the body of the intestines. Okay, if you see a colostoma from the attic area, it goes into the antrum, it goes usually lateral to the body of the intestines. With the posterior superior traction pocket colostoma, if it doesn't erode the complete intestines, if it goes to the antrum, it goes under the um, uh, medial to the uh, body of the intestine. So, whenever you do an articotomy, if you see only cholesterol, if you see, see only intest, which is intact, you should not leave and come out if you are managing a posterior superior extraction pocket with cholesterol. You have to always remove that uh, intest to see the under surface to see any cholesterol goes under the, the intest. Otherwise, you might miss this. Okay. How will you, uh, without removing in case, how will you uh, find out? Is there any way? So posterior tympanotomy. You are talking about attic. Medial to the uh, medial to the body of the incus. Through an uh, endoscopic. Endoscope, you, you look into what? Uh, we can nibble the head of malleus and uh, enter into the without removing mirrors, zinni mirrors. Uh... That is for the sinus sinus. How does the uh, uh, ventilatory pathway of the uh, attic? What is the Sir, uh... ventilatory pathway of the attic? Anteriorly, uh, tensor tympani fold uh, will be there, sir. Okay. It you will have usually canticus uh, and instrument tympanicus posticus. Okay, you have a posterior pathway and an anterior pathway. Anterior pathway goes medial to the uh, and leather malleus and it goes anteriorly, or and, uh, the posterior pathway goes along the isthmus tympanicus posticus. The tensor tympani folds uh, development entirely depends upon where the anterior epidemic uses arises from, which arises from the anterior pouch of the sacus medius. The, uh, the uh, fold will be complete. If it is from the uh, 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 pro tympanum, it will be, be perforated. So, all these things can be seen when you look at that in those areas with the angle scope from the uh, uh, tympanic calyx. So, elevated tympanic matter flap, you put an endoscope inside, you can see the medial surface of the, uh, uh, you can see the uh, ventilatory pathways, and if the so colostoma goes inside, it can be accessed. Okay, right then. What is this ventilation syndrome? Sir, uh, blockage of isthmus tympanicus posticus and uh, anticus will. Uh, totally cut off the ventilation to the attic region. Mm. Therefore, uh, retraction can occur and uh, cholesteatoma can... Uh, what is universal disventilation syndrome? What is segmental disventilation syndrome? Universal is... Uh, eustachian tube block is universal disventilation syndrome. Sir. See, for example, for your case, there's an attic problem. There's not much of a problem in the mesotic panel. That means there should be some disventilation between the attic diaphragm and the mesotympanum. If there is a the attic, uh, when there's only the posterior part of the mesotympanum is, is involved, 
uh, posterior part of the mixed tympanum alone is, is retracted. Then there will be from the angle of the malleus, which is adherent to the, to the promontory, and there is an adhesion which will cut off the posterior mixed tympanum from the pro tympanum. Then you get the posterior mixed tympanic disventilation syndrome. So this is called segmental disventilation. In the whole East Asian tube is blocked. Then you have a universal uh, retraction. Okay, so usually these people will have a contracted uh, antrum and patient will have a sclerosed master. Okay, so uh, what is uh, how much hearing loss is expected when the patient has got a see if this patient it's an intact drum. Okay, this patient has got an intact drum and there is an auricular discontinuity. Auricular discontinuity. Okay. Uh, and another patient who got a perforated drum with the same patient with an auricular discontinuity. This patient will have a more conductive hearing loss. Perforated drum. When the auricular is, auricular is normal, uh, past tense of perforation will have a more hearing loss. Okay. Around is, uh, if, if, if the lenticular process, necrosis. The lenticular process is uh, uh, necrosed, intact drum or a perforated drum, which will have uh, more hearing loss. Intact drum patient will have more hearing loss. Intact drum patient will have more hearing loss. Okay. Why? Because of through the perforated drum. Through the perforated drum, the certain amount of uh, uh, sound waves can go and touch the, uh, the foot plate, which is prevented by the uh, intact drum. So a perforated drum will have more hearing loss. What is bridging cholesterol? That, uh, the, when cholesterol will bridge between the necrosed artic, articular and the tympanic membrane, uh, it, the hearing loss will be level, comparative, sorry, less, uh, even though there is no articles, the cholesterol will bridge between the tympanic membrane and the foot plate. Sir. When will you suspect uh, auricular uh, discontinuity or bridging colostoma in a patient of a uh, colostoma with a conduct hearing loss? Uh, when, uh, when there is uh, conductive hearing loss with more than 60 decibel uh, hearing loss, uh, there can be auricular discontinuities. Less than... That is which, which amount of hearing loss, minimum this amount of hearing loss you should think of Auricular uh, fixation or, or discontinuity. 60 decibel means there can't be a bridging colostoma, right? But that's also a conduct hearing loss. 25 decibels. If there is more than 25 decibels of pure conduct hearing loss, always should, should look for there is some discontinuity in the auricles. Okay, right. Uh, this is about. Um, why this patient develops um, mixed hearing loss? Sir, uh, in uh, cholesteatoma, the back, uh, with the secondary bacterial infection, the bacterial toxins can enter into the round window, uh, round window or oval window and affect the outer hair cells, which can cause uh, sensory neural hearing loss also, sir. So the patient can have a mixed hearing loss. Okay. So the more than 25 decibel of... Uh, Conduct hearing loss in a case of a uh, with CSOM with cholesterol, always you you check up whether the patient has got a uh, auricular discontinuity. Okay, right. Um, so how will you proceed with this patient? I would like to in investigate and uh, treatment uh, first. I will do. Uh, Confirmation of the otoscopic finding with uh, otoendoscopy or otomicroscopy. Okay. Oral swab for pus culture sensitivity. Okay. Uh, X-ray mastoids. Listen, you do examination under anesthesia. Preferably general anesthesia or local anesthesia. With the help of an endoscope or a, or a microscope. What are all things you will do? Uh, if there is, uh, we can we have to clean the discharge in the middle, uh, sorry, external uh, canal if there is any. Uh, we okay. can remove the granulation tissue. Uh, if we need it, it can be taken for biopsy. First thing you do is confirm your uh, uh, examination findings. Okay. Then you take the pus from the middle ear. 
designed for culture sensitive. Then you do the thorough washing. Washing of the ear is called what? Oral toileting. What are the types of oral toileting? So, syringing, uh, suction clearance. Dry mopping, wet mopping, suction clearance. Dry mopping is using that cotton wool, cotton tip uh, applicator, you remove the pus. Wet mopping is syringing. Suction clearance is what we told now. But uh, oral toileting is to remove the pus from the ear. The, the pus can come from the external ear or, or middle ear with an intact drum or a, or a perforated drum. So wet mopping is usually for external canal with an intact drum. You can, you can remove all the secretions, pus, for example, keratosis of trans, wax, or automycosis, or uh, other, other discharges you can do, but not for the perforated drum. For the, the perforated drum, you prefer doing a dry mopping or suction clearance. Okay, so suck out all the pus. Once you remove the pus, you look for any granulation tissue, any free lying ossicle, very exposed to bones. Note all these things. Okay. Uh, how important is this to do the culture sensitivity in this patient? Sir, uh, for antibiotic coverage uh, in the pre, -op, uh, in pre and the post operative period, we can. Uh, the medical management has got no role in colostoma unless the patient is uh, uh, in a specific situation. Right. Generally, if the patient is ill and healthy, see a colostoma, you operate and take it out. Okay. So when you uh, the so pus for culture sensitivity is for peri-surgical antibiotic, pre-operative, peri-operative, and post-operative. It's called a number lock cover. Only for that, your culture sensitivity is useful. Okay, but not otherwise. What is the organism which is expected in these patients? Sorry, in articular disease. Uh... Pseudomonas, Proteus, and E. coli can be there. These are all the, the common antibiotics. You can give a uh, uh, rarely you can get an anaerobic bacteria also. Okay. Um, then uh, um, how will you uh, what else you do? You have done a Sir. examination under under the microscope. You have done a the first for congestion. The X-ray mastoids. La Last view, uh, HACT temporal bone. What do you see on last view? Sir, uh, an tegment plate, sinus plate, if there is any mastoid cavity, uh, if, uh, cholesteatoma, if there is any cholesteatoma, cotton wool appearance can be there, sir. What is the uh, 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 differential diagnosis for cavity? Sir, uh, large anteral cell. Okay. Uh, cholesteatoma cavity. Okay. Post surgical cavity. Okay. Uh, Eosinophilic granuloma. Tuberculosis. Okay. Uh, okay. Malignancy of. Uh, hmm? Sir, uh, Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Malignancy of temporal bone. Okay. Primary malignancy, secondary malignancy, uh, uh, glomus jugular, uh, even a million dot in system. All these things can erode bone and can produce cavity like lesions. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, what other investigations you do? So, HRCT temporal bone. Okay. Uh, MRI uh, diffusion restricted uh, diffusion weighted MRI for the mass types. Okay. Uh, pre anesthetic mm -hmm. workup. Sir. MRI, how will you, you differentiate uh, cystic lesion from cholesterol? Sir, uh, diffusion restriction will be there in cholesteatoma. Okay. So you should, should do the uh, diffusion weighted uh, uh, images. Okay. So T1, T2 alone is not sufficient. 
if you do a diffusion weighted, you can do any small, small, small colostomars, finger leg projections. There is a limited digit. Which case, these are all very important. When you do a CT, MRI, and all investigations, when you, you see the colostoma, you take X ray master, you see a large cavity, uh, you go and operate, or you will do this. For all cases, will you do that MRI? Will you do a CT scan? Which cases do you do an MRI and a CT scan? Sir, whenever there is a small cholesteatoma or extensive cholesteatoma, we will do okay. HRCT and MRI. Sir. Okay. With intracranial, suspected intracranial or uh, suspected any impending complications, we can uh, okay. do. Okay. 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 Then, too large a disease, too small a disease, you you got to do. And if you are doing a recurrent disease, residual disease, then you got to do. And then VAT patients. And then the patient who are uh, prone to go for. Uh, 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 medical legal legal problems like chip in the shoulder type of patient don't come for the uh, appointments on time and always fights with you and uh, for those patients you got to take all these for uh, for a precautionary reasons you got to take both CT scan and then and MRI okay right um, then will you do an audiometry yes sir pure uh, audiogram will uh, I will like to do sir to assess the quantity and quality of the hearing loss. Okay. Uh, so, which hearing loss you will do the uh, tympanoplasty? Which hearing loss you will not do the tympanoplasty? What are the pre requests for a tympanoplasty in these cases? Sir, uh, for a tympanoplasty, that should be preferably drier. Okay. Uh, there should not be any cholesteatoma. You should remove all the cholesteatoma. You should leave in with the with the cholesteatoma. Then good cochlear reserve, normal eustachian tube function. What is good cochlear reserve? Uh, bone conduction uh, hearing should be uh, there should not be no uh, loss more than thirty decibels. If there is more than thirty five decibels, forty decibel, what will you do? You do a canal wall up. You remove complete removal of cholesterol. Hearing will you with, do a tympanoplasty uh, or not? Sir, uh, with canal wall up, we can do uh, tympanoplasty and we can use hearing aid for that. You person. say tympanoplasty, you won't do it if there is a uh, poorer than 30 dB. Say 40 dB. But to use hearing aid, we, we should do tympanoplasty. So, what? For using hearing aid, we should do tympanoplasty, sir. So the, the good cochlear reserve concept is gone. Okay. So if the patient has got a poorer hearing, more than 30 decibel sensitive hearing loss, you augment the hearing with the, the tympanoplasty and keep a keep a hearing aid. Without tympanoplasty, you just close the repairing perforation and giving a hearing aid, the augmentation will be much lesser compared with the of doing a tympanoplasty and give a uh, hearing aid. Okay, so whenever you have a hearing loss, you augment it with the osteoplasty, uh, uh, and then if there is a still is not sufficient, you can go for a hearing aid. Okay, then <clears throat> okay, what will you do to the patient? For this patient, uh, I would like to do modified radical mastectomy. No, oh, fine. Yeah. What are all things you can do to the patient? Will you give any any conservative management? What is the conservative management you you give to this patient? Why? When? Sir, uh, if the retraction pocket is uh, fully visible and uh, self cleansing, uh, we and the patient is willing for follow up, we can do uh, repeated uh, suction clearance of the retraction pocket alone. Why? Uh, because uh, the in this patient, uh, it's more likely the disease is uh, in the attic, uh, in, confined to the attic and uh, lateral to the hand, uh, head of malleus. So, how do you know? So there is how do you know? I don't. I don't see any. I see only a, a granulation tissue. And if underlying bone erosion of the end of the malleus has gone. See the indications for medical management in a cholestoma is a patient who is unfit for surgery. Patient who is waiting for surgery. Patient who says, okay, I'll, I'll get it operated next month. 
then you can't send the patient okay baba data and then you can't send it you do a consistent medical management then the patient who is uh, not willing for surgery whatever you tell the patient is not willing you say okay if it's not willing get lost you can't tell that to the patient so you got to give something to the patient so that is the strict medical management then uh, as a, as you know the general condition of the patient is very poor a cardiac patient who got operated recently got a got a heart attack recently uh, uh, uncontrolled diabetes getting controlled or uh, renal disease these patients you got to give a conservative management what is that conservative management you got to give a suction clearance then first for culture sensitivity appropriate antibiotic you give a or uh, you give a, a local ear drops with the steroid and give a lot of uh you a lot of uh, uh, uh you got to follow up the patient repeatedly so that you monitor the patient this is progress okay so that is got to be done in the patient who are for waiting for surgery or patient who are not fit for surgery okay uh, what are all the, the surgery you want to do a modified radical mastectomy to do this patient is it Have you done a uh, audiogram to this patient? Yes, sir. What is the audiogram finding? Sir, uh, there was a mild conductive hearing loss, uh, about thirty-five decibels, and the airborne gap was uh, around twenty-five decibels, sir. The patient has got a fifteen decibel conductive hearing loss. What do you do? Only fifteen decibels. Attic atomy and attic reconstruction alone. What is bond is mass directly? Attic and trust. Attic atomy. Attic and trust. Attic atomy and I proceed to do an attic and trust. Okay. So you do a bond is mass directly. You will not explore the middle ear cavity. You remove only the attic and anterior part. So that sciatica antrostomy is called a bondy surgery. That is then for the patient who has got a near normal hearing or a or a normal hearing with an attic colostoma. Okay. So if there is a, a full blown colostoma extending into the antrum and the middle ear cavity, what will you do? Sir, uh, I will do um, modified radical mastectomy for that patient. What are all the incisions used for the ear disease? Sir. William Wild uh, incision, post oral incision. Post oral, okay. Um, Lumpert's end oral incision. Okay. Okay. We, I ask you for the for the ear disease. Okay, so only in diplomatic, what incision you use? Rosen's incision. You get a the Rosen's. These are three incisions: Rosen's endomyotal incision, William Wells post auricular incision, and Lempert's end oral incision. Okay, so uh, then how do you you proceed doing a modified radical mastectomy? How do you identify mastoid and what is the surface marking? McKeven's triangle. How do you do McKeven's triangle? Superiorly by uh, supramyotal crest, anteriorly okay. by the posterior superior part of uh, external auditory canal. Okay. Meatus and uh, a tangential line drawn to the posterior superior wall, uh, which bisects the supramyotal crest, forms the posterior limit of the McKeven's triangle. So, uh, superiorly posterior superior meatal. Uh, Uh, anteriorly posterior superior the metal wall superiorly the temporal line or the supra metal crest posteriorly a tangent from the posterior canal wall which bisects the supra metal crest or a temporal line it should bisect so that line makes the mckeven triangle whether the area is called fovea mastoide mastoid antrum is how deep from the area 1.5 cm 1.5 cm in the groove panel Okay, so uh, that is the that is the McEwen triangle. So, how do you proceed with modified radical mass directing? Sir, 
வில்லியம் வைட்ஸ் போஸ்டாரல் இன்சிஷன் பெரியா ஸ்டில் ஃபிளாப் எலிவேஷன் ஐடென்டிஃபை த மெக்கிவின் ஸ்ட்ராங்கிள் அண்ட் ஐ வில் ஸ்டார்ட் த போன் ஒர்க் ஆஃப்டர் ஐடென்டிஃபைங் த மாஸ்டர் ஆண்ட்ரம் ஐ வில் எக்ஸென்ட்ரேட் ஆல் த ஆக்சசிபிள் ஏர்செல்ஸ் பிரேக் த பிரிட்ஜ் ஐ வில் ரிமூவ் த பிரிட்ஜ் கம்ப்ளீட்லி அண்ட் ரெடியூஸ் த ரிட்ஜ் பிரிட்ஜ் that part of uh, that part of posterior superior meatal wall lying lateral to the aditus that part of the posterior superior meatal wall which lies lateral to the aditus that antrum is called bridge bridge what is ridge that part of posterior meatal wall lying lateral to the vertical part of facial nerve is uh, ridge all ridge what is anterior buttress uh, that part of superior meatal wall uh, lying posterior to the temporomandibular joint all it goes in joints with the tegment so that is the uh, uh, anterior buttress posterior buttress is that part of uh, posterior meatal wall uh, which attached with the floor of the es post oh, floor of the external artery canal okay so this is posterior buttress so you remove the bridge reduce the ridge to the level of facial canal how do you know which is the level of the facial canal Uh, sir at the level of lateral semicircular canal the second genu will start and uh, in the upper part uh, we can uh, remove up to the pyramidal process or the up, in the lower part we can remove up to the digastric uh, just medial to the digastric ridges uh, so superiorly you 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 reduce it up to the level of the lateral semicircular canal not up to the level of the uh, the pyramid pyramid lies medial to the, the facial canal you go up to the, the level of the, the pyramid you are bound to expose the uh, uh, facial canal so up to the level of the uh, uh, pyramid i mean uh, up to the level of lateral the uh, lateral semicircular canal and reduce it uh, the digastric give anterior part of the, the digastric give you will get the facial canal okay what is corner septum sir uh, it is petros uh, petros comes uh, suture line petros comes suture line is formed by what the petros part of i mean the the mastite air cell system is formed by two systems one is from the uh, squamous part of squamous part other one is from the petros part petros okay so these are all uh, one developed from the uh, sacus superior and uh, and other developed from the uh, posterior part of the, the sacus medius so both the things joins together and then they'll get uh, anastomosis easily if it, the, the arteritic plate persists that's called corner septum it's called a petros comes suture line okay petros persistent petros comes uh uh suture line so that's otherwise called a false bottom where you will uh, usually it seen that it was a very uh, exciting thing to show to the the post graduates when you are doing your uh, when i was uh, doing mastectomy those days but now with the advent of the uh, the cochlear implants corner septum is seen very often because uh, before it gets perforated at the age of uh, before two years we are doing doing mastectomy so the false bottom is very commonly seen these days so uh, that is when you when you drill you get a arteritic plate you think it's an antrum but you will not see the uh, uh, short process of intercourse other things if you drill and uh, lateral semicircular canal if you drill more you open up you see an other air cell system so that's a persistent petros comes suture line that's called corner septum okay then uh, uh, you what is modified radical mastectomy this is a surgical procedure wherein excentration of all accessible ear cells eradication of disease and excision of the cholestatoma sac from middle ear aditus and antrum and exterior and making it into a single cavity by breaking the bridge and reducing the ridge and exteriorizing the cavity by wide posterior meatoplasty so uh, eradication of the cholestoma from the middle ear cavity excision of the sac eradic uh, uh, elimination of the, the infection from the middle ear mastite uh, attic and antrum uh, making the mastite air cell system into a single cavity by removing the bridge reducing the ridge and amputating anterior and, and posterior buttress 
and exteriorizing the cavity by doing a wide metaplasty. It's called modified radical mastectomy. What is the drawback of modified radical mastectomy? Sir, uh, if the cavity problems can be there, uh, like uh, the repeated accumulation of uh, wax, uh, uh, repeated infections, uh, normal anatomy is distorted, sir. So here, if a patient needs any hearing aid, uh, we cannot use it. Uh, also, if uh, caloric stimulation can be there, post operatively the patient can have caloric stimulation. One is cavity problem. Second one is you can't, when the patient has got a sensor in your hearing loss, you can't augment by giving an hearing aid. Third is reconstruction will be poor. These are all the drawbacks of the cavities. Okay, do your modified radical mastectomy. What is the gold standard of? What is the somebody asked a question on that? So MRM is the surgical procedure by which you eradicate the disease from the middle ear, excise the sac completely, elimination of the uh, cholestoma from the middle uh, master diastole system, attic, aditus, antrum, and the middle ear cavity by and uh, make this cavity to make these parts into a single cavity by removing the bridge, reducing the, the ridge and amputating anterior and posterior buttress and exteriorize this cavity outside by doing a wide meatoplasty. This is modified radical mastectomy. Okay, so uh, we were talking about, about something else. So what is the other options of, uh, because you can't do a, a good reconstruction, you are completely destroying the normal anatomy. What are all the other options you have? Sir, canal wall up procedures, articotomy. Canal wall up procedure is one. Canal wall reconstruction is one. And then you have a small Master cavity mastectomy. It's like inside out uh, mastectomy. Okay. So oh, the one is inside out mastectomy and, uh, and canal wall obliterations. Okay. Now, what we do is called an endoscopic cholestoma uh, excision. Okay. Uh, so, with this, uh, what are all the uh, indications for canal wall down master? Sir, uh, recurrent or residual disease. Okay. Uh, post, uh, erosion so of posterior metal wall. wall. More than one third erosion of the bony canal wall. Then you got to do, there is no point in uh, retaining the posterior canal wall. Then, Extensive. Preferably, a, preferably a single earring ear, complicated earring ear, when you are not sure of complete excision of the colostoma sac. So, all these conditions is always referred to a canal wall down. What are all the indications for canal wall up? What are the advantages of, of canal wall up? Uh, you can have a small uh, mastoid uh, cavity. Canal wall up. Normal. Normal external artery canal. Normal external artery canal can will be there, sir. Uh, there is no small. cavity, no cavity problem. Better hearing reconstruction can have a uh, better hearing aid. Cosmetically acceptable ear. You do a wide metaplasty you, that is seen outside. Okay. Uh, that can be avoided. Uh, when will you do a, if the, patient, if the patient has got a dead ear, what are all the indications for radical mastectomy? What is radical mastectomy? Sir, uh, complete error, uh, obliteration of the, obliteration of the mm -hmm. cavity by uh, plugging the eustachian tube and uh, removing the inlet. Okay. Removing the disease from the eustachian tube inner ear and mastoid cavity and making it into a single cavity and obliteration of uh, blind closure of that. Uh... Modified radical mastoidectomy. Radical mastoidectomy, what is the, the difference? Sir, uh, we won't, um, uh, we will close the eustachian tube and we won't uh, reconstruct the hearing mechanism. So there is no acycloplasty. Okay, remove all the all the diseased uh, this thing and then close the eustachian tube. We don't want the functioning ear. 
so you close the you plug the instruction to remove all the article and then uh, if needed close the blind check closure of the excel are taken out that is called radical match activity what are the indications for radical match activity extensive cholesterol involving uh, yeast yeast tissue in the cholesterol in the cholesterol in the cholesterol what are the indications for radical match activity Uh, extensive col and aggressive cholesterol toma in uh, cholesterol toma involving the yeast tissue tube yeast tissue cholesterol to cholesterol toma yes cholesterol toma yes. involving the in petrus apex and inner ear petrus apex inner ear okay cholesterol toma involving inner ear what is it called dead ear cochlear promontory fistula yeast tissue tube uh, tube cholesterol toma then uh, uh, secostrum Secostrum of the uh, inner ear. All these things you do a radical mastectomy, where you do a modified radical mastectomy, remove the leaving behind foot plate, remove all the articles, clear the eustachian tube, plug the eustachian tube with what? Muscle. What muscle? Flare. We can use a temporalis muscle. Temporalis. Okay, take the muscle, plug it. Okay. or you can do it with a fat or you can do it with uh, uh, with soft tissues usually we use the muscle okay then um, that is the radical mastectomy usually is that for cochlear promontory fistula or dead ear or eustachian tube cholestoma or uh, secostrum of the inner ear okay so how will you for uh, once you have uh, done the surgery how do you reconstruct <coughs> Sir, for uh, post-surgical modified or... radical mastectomy, how will you reconstruct? Sir, we will do uh, myotoplasty and uh, my... no, the canal wall is down now. You have only uh, the stapes. How will you do reconstruct? Sir, we can do type three team. Tympanoplasty. We can do type three tympanoplasty if the stapes is also not. Okay, stapes is not there. Total ossicular reconstruction process is our cartilage process. Uh, graft can be used. Cartilage tympanoplasty, or you do a uh, short columnula. Still, you don't do a long columnula. Not total ossicular reconstruction. Do a short columnula because your posterior canal wall is very low. Okay, so you do a do a short columnula. Then you put a graft and then do a Uh, metaplasty. How do you uh, uh, how do you support the uh, metaplasty? How would keep it patent? So after uh, we will put a stent or a medicated gauze packs inside the cavity. How long will you keep it? For fourteen days. Fourteen days. Okay, you just assess periodically till it get infected or. Uh, Twelve to fourteen days, whichever it is here. Ten to fourteen days, whichever it is earlier. Okay, then then you take it out. Uh, then how will you? When will you think that the discharge will stop? Sir, uh, so what drugs will you give? Will you give any ear drugs? Will you give any antibiotic? No, sir. After complete epithelialization of the cavity, uh, the discharge will stop. I will give oral okay. antibiotic coverage only. Give a uh, ear drops with steroid to control the infection and uh, uh, make the ear better. So three weeks to three months discharge is expected. Okay. What are all the complications of metaplasty? Sir, uh, wide metaplasty can uh, allow uh, infections. Into the middle ear. Sorry, infection into the cavity. You separate the clear from the uh, from the cavity by your your grafting. Uh, the cavity is the cavity based by the middle ear. That will not cause infection. Now we call infection. It is fungal infections and bacterial. That is uh, happens on axillary ear also. When you do the when you remove the cartilage, the patient can develop pericondritis. Okay, so that's a very painful condition that you got to be 
Think very careful. How will you manage? But very quantities we can do incision drainage and uh, compressive dressing. Post operative patient incision drainage compressive dressing patient will go to the steroid and higher antibiotic and the culture director antibiotic. Okay, so uh, uh, if the patient wants a better hearing, so what surgery? What are all the types of canal wall up procedures? Articotomy. Cortical mastectomy, uh, combined approach tympanoplasty. What is combined approach tympanoplasty? Cortical mastectomy with the posterior tympanotomy and transcanal uh, tympanotomy. Anti tympanotomy, posterior tympanotomy, cortical mastectomy. Cortical. Is called, is called combined approach tympanoplasty. Okay, what is the intact bridge mastectomy? Articotomy. Intact bridge mastectomy. Sir, uh, the medial most part of the bridge is removed along with the antrum uh, and the extension of antrum and atti attic. So that we can remove the disease from the atitis, attic and the antrum. Lateral Only the medial most part of the bridge is retained. Yes. So lateral part is removed so that you maintain the, the posterior canal wall so you can, you can reconstruct the Middle cavity. That's called intact bridge master. Okay. So, articotomy is a, a, a canal wall. Articoantrostomy, if you don't reconstruct, that's called a canal wall down. If you, if you, if you reconstruct, that's, that's canal wall up. Okay. What are all the ways of reconstructing posterior canal wall? Sir, so using cartilage. Uh, Bone grafts. Okay. Hydroxyapatite. Proselyn. You can cut the bone, take it out and uh, keep the bone. You can take the cartilage from the septum bone. Then you can uh, reconstruct. Or you can use the uh, drained uh, uh, bone test to reconstruct. So, uh, various methods of the posterior canal wall. Okay, what is uh, so uh, which case you will open a pantrum, which case you don't open a pantrum? Sir, uh, posterior superior retraction pocket cases uh, we have, we must uh, open the antrum. Posterior superior retraction patient. What is flexible approach? What are the steps of flexible approach? Atticotomy. Uh, look for the cholesterol inside the attic. If there is any suspected uh, medial uh, spread of the cholesterol, we will do uh, and we will remove the no, head all, of malleus and all all cholesterol. For all mastectomies, you should have a flexible approach where for everything you do something or you don't do it. Okay. Uh, I mean, what I mean to say is uh, one minute. So, um, flexible approaches first you put a post auricular incision, then take the graft, then do a yeah, uh, may Then do a canal plastic. Posterior canal plastic, anti canal plastic. Next six lateral canal then do a uh, conical thing so that your uh, reconstruction will be better. Then look at the tympanic membrane. Define whether it's a mucosal disease or a, or a squamous disease. If it's a, a squamous disease, do a uh, mastodotomy. Mastodotomy, if there's a mastoid, doesn't contain cholestoma. You, do, you, you don't do a cortical mastoid, do a mastoidotomy. If you see a cholestoma, follow the cholestoma. If you don't see any cholestoma, do a atticotomy. Okay. Then do an atticotomy. Then do a uh, uh, mesotympanic clearance. Decide whether you want to do a canal wall up or a, or a canal wall down. So these are all the places you can 
you, you can define if you see a uh, if you do a meiotomy when you see the huge cholestoma then you do a uh, uh, go up to the tip uh, sinodural angle remove all the areas if there is cholestoma stop short of the up to the uh, uh, only up to the lateral semicircular canal then you can plan uh, canal wall up okay or you can you can still do a small cavity uh, mastectomy or posterior canal wall, wall mastectomy so doing it segmentally one by one by one by one so you do a post orthotic incision take the graft meiotomy uh, uh, canal plasty first step design once you have decided decided you are you are first step you don't see any any cholestoma only a uh, retraction packet do a do a yeah, articotomy remove the posterior superior uh, uh bony over and look for uh, atic cholestoma and uh, sinus tympani cholestoma you do see cholestoma then you do a mea uh, mastoidotomy then see whether there is cholestoma or not if there is no cholestoma go to that next step if there is cholestoma do accordingly then you do a uh, articuloplasty reconstruction and come out that is called a flexible approach okay then uh, uh, so with you have done all these things then uh, what is recidivism sir uh, recurrent or residual disease uh, cholestoma combined together called recidivism why is called recidivism sir uh, what is the meaning of recidivism come back uh, tendency to fall back to his original behavior so this term is borrowed from the social pathology social pathology they uh, there are people who are called jail birds they will do a small 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 mistakes get convicted go to the jail come out do the same mistake or same uh, similar type of mistake go to the jail and come back and they'll be keep recurring to the uh, uh, repeatedly coming back to the jail so the same word was borrowed from the social pathology it's called recidivism that means residual uh, the tendency of the cholestoma to come back it can be a residual cholestoma or a recurrent cholestoma what are the causes of residual cholestoma uh, high facial residual uh, maybe face sinus tympani for facial reasons we, we would have missed the, during the initial operation of cholestoma so residual cholestoma can be a cholestoma which is left behind knowingly or unknowingly where are all you leave behind cholestoma knowingly where you are allowed to leave behind cholestoma uh, other than to uh, dura okay Uh, tightly adherent to the membranous labyrinth lot of places which is keep depending upon the surgeon's comfort uh, intracrural cholestoma cholestoma over the round window oval window days and patient all these things if you are competent enough you can remove or you can you can leave uh cholestoma which is allowed to form epithelial pearls are from the uh, cholestoma attached to the dura or the cholestoma attached to the labyrinthine fistula or over the foot plate of stapes you can if you are not confident you can just leave in let it make an epithelial pearl and you can take it out easily after that okay that's called the cholestoma it is left behind knowingly what is that cholestoma you you leave behind unknowingly Sir, cholestoma in the hidden areas. What are the hidden areas? Sinus tympani, facial reasons. What are the boundary the facial reasons? Sir, laterally by cauda tympani, medially by the vertical part of facial nerve, superiorly by fossa incudis. So that's called antrum threshold angle, that is called facial reasons, which lies lateral to the vertical part of the facial nerve. Medially by the vertical part of facial nerve, laterally by the cauda tympani or tympani canis, superiorly by the um, uh, fossa incudis. This was a very famous question some ten years back, but now after the advent of uh, cochlear implant surgeries, everybody knows what is posterior tympani. So what is sinus tympani? 
சார் ஸ்பேஸ் இந்த ரெட்ரோ டீம் பேனம் பவுண்டட் மீடியலி பை ப்ரமோன்ட்ரி லேட்ரலி பை வெர்டிகல் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபேஷியல் நவ் சுப்பீரியர்லி பை பாண்டிகுலஸ் அண்ட் இன்ஃபீரியர்லி பை சுபிகுலம் so there is a boat shaped space extending from the oval window to the round window medial to the uh, facial canal which is bound laterally by the facial canal medially at the upper part by the um, uh, foot plate of stapes and the, the oval window superior part is bound by the ponticles inferior part by the subiculum and the uh, medially uh, inframedially by the round window so okay. that boat shaped area is called sinus tympani uh, it's a it's a real hidden area what are all the types of sinus tympani uh, sir uh, beneath the retrofacial uh, medial to facial now beneath the facial and retrofacial okay so whenever there is a uh, sinus tympani goes up to the uh, the facial now that's called uh, medial to to facial now then it uh, that is called the uh, anterior to the to the facial now it can go below the the facial now that is type 2 retrofacial that's called type 3 so retrofacial which uh, retrofacial uh, uh, sinus tympani colostoma will you remove type 1 and type 2 can be removed through the uh, meso tympanum using angled scopes mirrors or you adjust the patient or or go to the face as a face end of the patient and you can you can remove it but the type 3 the facial uh, type 3 sinus tympani you got to to remove the, uh, the colostoma by going from behind you, you remove all the retrofacial cells identify the uh, by the colostoma and try to remove the the colostoma okay right uh you you need to reroute the, the patient now because you are not going to open up the uh facial canal so with an intact canal you can you can remove the cholestatoma okay that is about the uh, where else you can leave behind cholestatoma other than to dura no no that is what are all the hidden areas a sinus tympani anterior epitympani anterior epitympani greases then uh, anterior to the digastric ridge medial to the digastric ridge and then uh, the tracts which is taking the the colostoma to the peters apex like a uh, retro labyrinth and intra labyrinth and supra labyrinth and pathways and these cells where through which the the colostoma can go it is very very commonly seen in cellular mastoid particularly in children okay so this are all called the recurrent i mean uh, residual colostomas what is a recurrent colostoma sir uh, recur after uh, surgery uh, like okay. in a high facial ridge uh, it can uh, have a uh, retraction again and uh, colostoma can develop so this can be be divided into a surgeon factor or a, or a disease factor surgeon factors are you don't sorcerize the cavity you leave behind sharp creases like a uh, retrofacial cells with the colostoma cellular mastoid you see the uh, the cells which is uh, not exenerated properly left behind or you can uh, leave high facial ridge sinus tympani don't expose the anterior epitympanic creases all these things you leave behind crevices the the colostoma can recur okay second is the disease factor disease factor is a virulent disease like a pediatric colostoma or a disease which uh, there are two types of colostomas it's called a invasive colostomas and the uh, a blunt colostomas the, the blunt colostomas usually destroy all the cells and it make the smooth cavity by itself usually it is comes very often in the uh, uh, sclerosed mastoid so these colostomas are easy to remove but it's all it got a blunt edges so that is easy to to remove and you won't leave this this colostomas then there is an invasive colostomas which which can usually occurs in the children occurs in the cellular mastoid goes inside all these mastoid as cells so these colostomas are very difficult to remove okay so these colostomas are called as invasive colostomas and these are all uh, uh, you can uh, 
<coughs> okay, these are all invasive colostomas, which you can, uh, very difficult to eradicate the disease. Sometimes you got to accept the, the failure. Okay, right. Anything else what we have uh, uh, left out? So what do you think the, the patient's uh, uh, disease-free state? What is cavity problem? Sir, uh, repeated infections, accumulation of wax, uh, dizziness due to caloric uh, stimulations. What is Seagull's status? Deformity. Sir? What is Seagull's status? Seagull, Seagull. These cavities, when the air goes inside, it, it, it produces a noise, which is, looks like seagull is shouting. No, see, seagull's voice. That's called seagull tinnitus. The noise occurs because of the air goes inside the um, uh, goes inside a cavity. That's called uh, seagull tinnitus. Okay, what is uh, uh, chocolate cyst? Sir, uh, accumulation back cyst inside the Accumulation of wax uh, inside the cavity. No, uh, the chocolate cystis, you get the, uh, like a cholesterol granuloma, you get the uh, uh, cystic lesions in the, in, in the cavity due to the uh, hemorrhage in the, in the cavity. So that's called chocolate cyst. Uh, chocolate cyst. Okay, what is, uh, uh, what is the, Cause for failure in these patients. Single most important cause for failure. In a canal wall down, modified radical matrachomy. If you want to do a revision, what is the cause? <laughs> Sir, uh, inadequate meatoplastic. Inadequate meatoplastic. How will you define uh, what is an adequate meatoplastic? Sir, uh, the volume of uh, cavity should be adequate. Volume of air in the cavity should be adequately, uh, adequately uh, ventilate the surface of the mass head cavity. VS ratio. VS ratio. Volume versus surface ratio. So it should be one third. So the bigger the, the surface, more should be the metaplasty so that more air goes inside the cavity. Okay. If you don't do that, the patient will develop. Um, you can't see all that area. It won't get, get ventilated. Uh, what are the other causes of persistent discharge? Sir, uh, high facial ridge, repeated infections because of a high facial ridge. Uh, uh, Sump in the floor. Sump can occur at any place. Can occur in the sinus, sinus tympani, can occur the, the sinus tympani, the anterior tympani, the uh, tip, uh, anything. Okay. Recurrent colostoma, residual colostoma, repeated infection, cavity problem. Then you get mucosalization of the cavity. What is mucosalization of the, the cavity? Sir, uh, middle ear mucosa develops. Cavity, uh, cavity has got nothing to, to do with eustachian tube. Middle ear uh, mucosa then, growing grows into middle ear mucosa grows into the mastoid cavity, and for, it is called as mucosalization. You don't put the, a graft properly, and you don't separate the. Uh, the squamous epithelium from the tulus ciliated columnar. The, the columnar epithelium will come inside the cavity. The characteristic feature of the columnar epithelium or a cuboid epithelium is it contains goblet cells and it secretes. So you keep on getting the air discharge. This can happen in the uh, uh, tympanic membrane grafting also. So you get keep on getting the uh, uh, Discharge is called a mucosalization of the cavity. Okay. Asha.
sir janira yes sir dr lakshmi here sir they can we uh, close the session today ah uh, sure sir yeah uh thank you sir uh, so, sir has uh, got some emergency has just now left it seems so i request okay, you to give the closing remarks sir so uh, actually a very beautiful presentation by subhasubramanian uh, so on behalf of uh, dr jantlam sir i would like to thank uh, professor anthony sir uh, for uh, hey arsha i am coming sir i am coming I'm sir thank you sir thank you sir we would be very uh, happy to have you sir Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And three, sir, it was a wonderful discussion, taking us back to all those MS days. I haven't had an ear case discussion in quite a long time, so thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. I think actually, if you suppose my name as uh, he has done uh, quite well. Well, well. Yeah. But uh, nowadays, such a, such a good audience, such a big audience is not a joke. So I think he has done a quite a good job. So. Be, very well done dr shiva subramanian congrats congrats shiva but uh, you, the thing is when we were doing our uh, uh, for till recently all the long cases would be larynx in the uh, the ms but now slowly the ca larynx and uh, ca hypopharynx is going out of the hands of ent surgeons now everybody concentrates only on the ear we used to tell if you get a ear you will fail if you get a larynx somehow you will pass So whatever answer you tell it looks adequate whatever answer you tell it looks adequate but in here whatever answer you tells it is not adequate i know i know the first question when i when i went there for a for a mock exam was dimensions of whole window i told some number <laughs> they said no that is the dimension of a foot plate i asked you dimension of whole window so that that for me they janigram used to tell even if you walk upside down in the ear nobody will see you uh, only after the advent of endoscopic ear surgery somebody will look at you and say he is doing something new otherwise uh, ear has been uh, saturated so it is very difficult to impress people with the ear so but now we have we have come to the ear in the in the long cases so you got to be careful most of the the examiners will be well versed in the ear questions so best wishes to the all the exam going going pgs uh, so with this uh, we say say good night to you all so thank, thank you. you and we'll see you next for the next case discussion sure 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 bye, bye, bye. bye. thank you thank you thank bye. you thank you bye bye thank you, thank you. thank you